excited about going to Thailand. Hope you're around. It's going to be in December. Are you going to be around? Anyhow, that was a performance of In My Sky, an original composition, as performed by our virtual psychedelic rock group, Nabucco Dinosaur. Um, <clears throat> it's a little bit spare. It says A-B-A-B, -A -B, uh, the structure of the song. But there is a solo in the recorded version. And so all you have to do is uh, type in, search on your streaming service of choice, Nabucco Dinosaur, N-A-B-U-C-C-O, and then Dinosaur in English. And uh, you'll come up and look for the song that's called In My Sky. There's also a fun animated video that you can find on YouTube. It's hosted by Think Root Records, our record label, which is out of Ohio. Um, uh, Directed by the um, magnificent Clara, uh, Cara Square, not Clara. So anyway, that's what's going on. But yesterday I saw a video, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the gal, but she's a former Disney illustrator, and uh, then she went and became an independent, like a so social media type person. And she had some... Uh, uh, advice for people who are trying to dig their heels in or to uh, get a whole a foothold in social media. She had seven tips because she recounted the uh, story of a friend of hers who um, had posted 900 um, posts and only had about 500 followers. And that sounded familiar to me. <coughs> so anyway... Uh, long story short, um, oh, it looks like uh, we just received another pillow, uh, another um, fun pillow that you can order from, uh, and it's for this song. How crazy is that? I'll show you that t to you tomorrow. So anyway, I ordered a pillow with the cover art of In My Sky, and my woman just sent me a text, um, it came up on the screen here, showing that uh, it has arrived. How... Mystical. See, we do live in a simulation. This is ever more proof that we live in a simulation. So I wish I could remember this gal's channel. It's something weird. It's something like uh, pineapple and onions or cactus aardvark or sushi taco. Some, some, something uh, absurd like that. Anyway, she had seven points. And the first one, I think, is the one I may be um, falling amiss with. And that's my niche is too wide. So she said... Like, say you're an artist, but you're also into music, and you're also into surfing, and 
la di da this and that, and you uh, put that all on your single um, Instagram page. And uh, it's just too many varied subjects, even though that's all, it, it, it illustrates the totality of your being, yourself, your experience on this plane, in this simulation. Um, the thing is, is that um, uh, you, you, people who are viewing it can't get, there, there's too many items, it's confusing for the viewer, it's just how the human attention span works. And so, what I do on my Instagram is I do one podcast, like this, as you're watching right now, and then another uh, random image, usually lately, just because it's easy, it's uh, something I come across in the street, like street art, or something, you know, something out of the ordinary, like an old car, a, a unique looking automobile. Her second part uh, is strong visual identity, I think I do have that. A friend of ours once said, "Oh yeah, that looks like uh, Paul's work." You know, so all of my art, all of my work, artwork, visual art, anything I do is it all has a certain commonality. There's a there's a motif running through it. All. The third point she had was putting out blanks. So what she meant by that is to make each post count. So don't uh, uh, put out successive like if you're going to have an art opening or something like that. She suggested that you don't put out successive uh, announcements of the art opening like. A, our opening in three days, and then our opening in two days, our opening in one day, our opening today, our opening still on, you know, things like that. That's what she described as blanks. Her fourth point was engagement. So that, that just means that you have to interact with um, uh, people and your media. And that, Anne-Marie, is why I'm so glad that you uh, faithfully show up so often. It's because I can uh, engage with someone, and that's uh, probably, that's half the fun, at least. Um, storytelling. So, uh, too often I am laconic, and I just put up some mysterious uh, two or three word description, or nothing, or a symbol, or a, a cryptic message of some sort. And so she said it would be better to explain and have more in-depth descriptions of, of your work and uh, I, I was countered to doing that because generally speaking in this age you have to make everything as slick and simple as possible in my opinion and I just have the feeling that no one reads anything you know uh, I guess there's a sweet spot you know there's there's too much and there's too little so if someone is going to put on a, a story like this long on their Instagram post. I'm just going to get down a few paragraphs and say, this better be riveting or else I'm out of here. I'm going to eject. So for my next uh, post, I'm going to post a little video of uh, how I prepare a canvas for painting with uh, old book pages and blueprint and uh, sand it down and create a motif which shows through. I use it as a, a pattern uh, as part of the image. Um, so that'll be the next one, and then I uh, wrote a paragraph explaining how that's done, how and why I do it. Um, uh, momentum. So that means if you if you make a post where you there's a lot of engagement, for example, then it would be a good idea to surf that wave, so to speak. So to create more uh, media based on that sort of attention that you're receiving. So. For instance, if I put up this uh, video of showing how I prepare a canvas and it gets lots of uh, people's attention, then that would normally or logically encourage me to do a little bit more of that until that wave crests and we ride it out and we get to the shore. We unzip our wetsuit, we uh, towel off, and someone hands us a uh, cold beer. And the seventh, which I'm very good at, is uh, no private life. That means don't put up pictures of you and your disgusting food and your ugly children. Excuse me. Oh my goodness, do we have time for the Manuel de Guerra de Lunar, the Warrior of Light? Emery, do you have a number for me between 25 and 157? Emery, can you help me out? Otherwise, I'm going to go into the coin jar here and divide a magic number from the coin jar. So we've got 20. Feel free to yell it out, Emery, if you... Uh, have a number in mind between 25 and 157. 20 plus 100, 120. 120.
125. Uh-oh. We can't split that page there. 125. Page 125. Very good. The Guerrilla de la Lumina Pedro. The War of the Light Knows How to Lose. Il ne considère pas le défaite d'un air détaché avec des phrases du genre « Bon, ça n'a pas d'importance » ou « En réalité, je ne, voulais pas, je ne le voulais pas vraiment. » Ok. He doesn't consider a defeat with a detached air with phrases such uh, as uh, « Oh, uh, that's not important » or uh, « Actually, I didn't really want it. » Il accepte la défaite comme telle et ne tente pas de le transformer, transformer en victoire. He accepts the defeat <coughs> as it is and doesn't attempt to transform it into a victory. <coughs> la douleur des blessures, l'indifférence des amis, la solitude de la perte le rend amer. The pain of wounds, the indifference of friends, the, the loneliness and the loss um, uh, renders uh, bitterness. Dans ces moments-là, il se dit, j'ai lutté pour quelque chose et je n'ai pas réussi. J'ai perdu la première bataille. And in these moments there, he says, I struggled for something, I fought for something, and I did not um, succeed. I lost the first battle. Cette phrase lui donne des forces nouvelles. This phrase gives him new uh, strength, renewed strength. Il sait qu'on ne peut pas toujours gagner et il distingue ses actions pertinentes de ses erreurs. He knows that we cannot always win and he distinguishes his actions uh, Excuse me. And he distinguishes the pertinence of these actions from his errors. Very good. Or, in the words of Bismo, I know I'm going to don't got get, but I'm going to get mine. Or something along those lines. I paraphrase. But we only got a minute left. Amory, how's everything? How's the weather? I heard that in um, December it's windy. Is that true? Down uh, where you are. In December. What would be the best time to go to the Phuket, Phuket area? Well, <clears throat> in my life, in my soul, good things come and good things go. In my time, in my world, in my head. That's how I know Okay, thanks, Emery. Thank you, everyone else, for coming. Don't forget to uh, share, like, subscribe, troll, and tell your mom. All right, I love you all, time to go. Ciao.